In this video, let's turn this into that. That's right, today is all about building a minimal API and we're going to implement all CRUD operations with Entity Framework. Let's go right after you hit that like button. And by the way, I've got a free ebook for you and the source code of this video's project. You'll find the link at the end of this video, but no, 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 don't skip, watch and learn. All right, first a quick recap, let's say about this project here. Check out the info card if you want to check out this project or how we built this API. In the end, it is a really simple video game database API, where as you can see here, we've got a classic controller, right? With all the endpoints here to get all video games, get a single video game, create one, update one, and delete a video game with the HTTP request methods and so on. Maybe you already know that we use Entity Framework already. So we've got our database context here with just one database set, the video game in the end. And we already see some data. So here we have Spider-Man 2, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Cyberpunk 2077. And we use a SQL Server database, as you can see here, in the program CS, we're using the SQL Server provider and we get the connection string from our app settings JSON file down here, as you can see here. Again, for the complete recap, or if you want to build this project as well, check out the info card or again, the source code of this project here. And one more thing, the model is this thing here, the video game, just an ID title, platform developer and publisher. And now the big task is to turn this thing into the minimal API. So let's start building the minimal API. But one quick note, many devs think that you have to put all the endpoints of a minimal API in the program CS. And this is simply not true, right? You can organize your endpoints of the minimal API as well as you can with the classic controller. For instance, you can write extension methods for the um, web application for this thing here, right? The app, or we can group the endpoints with the help of the route group builder, but we'll do that in this video. But let's just start at the beginning and really start here in the program CS and put the first endpoint there. So we start small, right? And then we will build up on that. So first thing is this endpoint get video games. As you can see here, we've got the um, the attribute HTTP get this is telling us that we want to use the HTTP get request method. When we make a request, we inject the video game DB context up here with the primary constructor. In this case, you can do it in a another way, of course, as well. And then we see what we get back. We also then see what we want to return. Real quick, if you want to level up your skills with .NET and Blazor, now is the time to join the .NET Web Academy. You get over 40 hours of pure learning content. We cover things like clean architecture and CQRS. We dive really, really deep into all the new render modes of Blazor. You will learn how to publish your web applications with the help of GitHub Actions and Azure. And you get access to our community and the brand new Discord server with live collabs. I'm really looking forward to seeing you inside the academy. Now let's just write the first endpoint of the minimal API. If you don't know this already, pretty simple actually, because this can be done in one or two lines. All right. So what do you have to do? Again, we use the app, the web application in the end, and then we use this method here, map get. And this is already telling you it adds a route endpoint to the I endpoint route builder that matches HTTP get requests for the specified pattern. And you can also see that this thing needs a pattern, a string. This is the URI in the end, right? So how do you access this endpoint? How do you get to this thing? And then a request delegate. Let's talk about that in a sec. But as you can already see here with map get, we decide to use an HTTP get request request method. And maybe you already know now that you can also use post for instance, and that would then be an HTTP post request, put delete, and so on. But let's again, keep things simple at the beginning. First, the pattern and this is now our address of the endpoint. And here we manually write API video games, for instance, and when we this uh, compare this now with the video game controller, you see that we got our route here, right? So it's called API, and then in brackets controller, which is the convention that we want to use the name of this controller. So everything that uh, is written before the controller term, and here it is video game. Now in our 
new minimal API endpoint, we wrote video games with the S at the end. So we will see in a sec when we try this out with Scalar, not Swagger now, Scalar this time, that we get well, a couple of options. We get still the endpoint of the classic controller and then of the minimal API. So you can combine both, right? If you want to do that. Now the so-called delegate, what's that? Well, in the end, this is just our anonymous function, let's say. So as you can see here, we have um, an async keyword. So meaning this is an asynchronous method injecting in the end, the video game DB context and then returning this stuff here. So we access the context, then uh, the video games from there, and then we turn this into a list. All right, let me just grab this thing here already because maybe we can make use of that. So copy this and then here we can inject the video game DB context right into that endpoint, meaning we write the following. It's an asynchronous method. So here now we write async and then in parenthesis and you find the right key on your keyboard video game db context that's the one we call this thing context so with that we injected the video game db context and now with this arrow operator we can write our method let me put this into a new line and here i just paste this thing that i just copied rename that so now this is the context we just injected and then we access the video games and then to list async and that's it all right so this is really minimal you could say so let's save this and try this out all right there we are Again, you have to access uh, when you want to use Scala as well, you have to access this little tool here with the base URL that you can find in Visual Studio and then in your launch settings JSON file, there you got the local host address in this case with the proper port. The port may be different in your case, pretty sure it's different. But then you just add Scala and then V1. Don't want to go into deep here. Again, I did this in the other video and you get the source code. So you see the configuration there. But whatever you here now see, this is the classic controller video game. And now we got video game API. So this is in the end the project name, right? And here we got our video games endpoint. We can test the request, hit send, and you see I already already uh, got the, the database covered, of course. So now here we get all the games and just double check. It's exactly the same here, right? With the classic controller, we also get all the games and this is it already. But now, as I already told you, you don't have to put everything here into the program CS. You can organize your stuff. So let's do that real quick. In the solution explorer, just right click your project file and add a new folder endpoints in this case. All right. And then here we create a new item, a new file. And here we can call this, for instance, video game endpoints like that. All right. And here we want to put everything. But again, we can write an extension method for that. So here now we make this a static class and then also here a static method public static returning the web application. And then we will use this method in our program CS. So just one line then in the program CS. So web application is what we want to return. And let's just call this map video game endpoints. And here now we say this web application app. So with that, this keyword here and the static method, we make an extension method out of that. And here now we just move our method here. All right. So now let me just paste this into there. And here we are missing a reference. So with control and period, we can add the using directive for Microsoft Entity Framework Core. And here we return the app. Hopefully now the formatting works, but it doesn't. So let's format this ourselves. And already let's add the second endpoint. So this again would be app map get for the video game by ID, right? So here we write again, API video games, and then in parenthesis, the ID, you can also specify a constraint here that this has to be an integer, but you don't have to do it. It would also work without it. And then again, we write async and the video game DB context like that, call this context, and then also the ID, right? So this might be a little confusing at the beginning because we have the context here, which is actually injected using dependency injection, and then also the parameter, the ID, everything in this method here. So again, maybe a bit confusing. When we compare this again here, we see that all the dependency injection stuff is done on top, right? And also in the constructor. And then down here in the get video game by ID method, we actually have the parameter, the ID. We also find the ID back here in this attribute, which is saying, 
notifying us that we want to use an HTTP a get request method and the route, the additional route additionally to API controller is then the ID parameter. All right, anyways, let's go back here and finish this up or maybe again, we can copy something. Yeah, we can actually, let me just copy this. And then here again, we use the uh, arrow operator and then here, what you want to do is again, we get the game right with this context now. So video games find async ID. And then we can in fact do the following we write these lines here, or we just turn this into one single line with return game is not null. So this is the ternary operator then. So here, if the game is not null, we want to return the status code 200. Okay, now for the minimal APIs, we have to make this a bit differently. We got this little thing here results. Now, what is that? Well, as you can see a factory for I results. And when we dive a little bit deeper, and just click here, we see this is this class, and we can look for the okay, for instance, right? Uh, either with a value or without and here it says this produces a status code 200 OK risk Pons, all right, this is pretty important. In a minimal API, you have to use this object to return your status codes in the classic controller, this thing here, we already have it in there. This is an okay object result in the end, also a status code 200. Okay, just a tiny pitfall, maybe where you just have to be a little bit careful and pay attention. So here now we have the option to return the actual game or similar to the classic controller, we can also say results and then not found because we did not find the actual game, we add our semicolon, and then it should be yep, there is something missing. Now it's done. All right, one more thing, we now have to use this method, of course, in our program CS. So down here, now we write app and then map video game endpoints, there it is our beautiful extension method. So again, video game endpoints here. And in the program CS, we add this method, restart our application and try this. So let me just reload this manually. All right. Now here again, we've got our our um, endpoint to get all the games, there they are. And here now this thing actually, yep, not worked. We want to get for instance, ID one, which is just Spider Man and ID four returns a 404 not found. Awesome. Now let's continue with the other CRUD operations. And again, for that now, instead of using this class, we got here, well, it's still the same class, but I don't want to use the web application. Now I want to introduce groups, because maybe you already saw I have to write API video games for each endpoint. And maybe there's a tiny bit annoying. So we can group this stuff together and then say that for the group to access the group, we use this stuff. And then for the uh, single endpoints, we just add the additional route. This is actually pretty similar then to the classic controller, we have our overall route, let's say API controller, and then down here, we have the details, right? So we can do something similar for a minimal API. So let's do that. So instead of the web application, now we use the route route group builder route group builder. That's the thing as you can see here a builder for defining groups of endpoints with a common prefix. So this is the URL I was talking about that implements both the I endpoint round builder and I endpoint convention. But I'm so sorry that I have this code, but I hope it's not too annoying. This can be used and so on and so on. You see the details here and you can click through that or you just follow the video. And here now instead of the web application, now we've got again our route group builder, we have to use then of course, a method in the program CS. But what we can now do is we don't have the app, let's just call this group now, so it's not too confusing, uh, replace this here, here, and also return the group. And then instead of the complete URIs, we can just do something like that, right? So here now, we still have the parameter. And that's it. This is the complete change for this file. But now in the program CS, instead of this thing here, we write map group actually, as you can see, creates a route group builder for defining endpoints, all prefixed with a specified prefix, which is now the URL, if you like. So in this case, this would be video games like that. And here now we can use our map 
function map video game endpoints. All right. And of course, we could also again put this into another file, same way I we did it before with the web application, return the web application. So another extension method and put all the groups in there, right? So you can even go one level further, organize the groups in separate files and so on. Lots of possibilities with minimal APIs. But for this beginner tutorial, let's just keep it at that. So API video games it is. And in our video game endpoints file, we uh, have the, the endpoints now with the help of a group. Let's just try that real quick, restart the application and nothing should change, right? We can just test our endpoints here and everything works as expected. But now let's continue with all the other operations because I think it's really interesting. These are just the queries. We just want to read data, get data, but now we also want to change data. So when we have a look at our classic controller regarding the post next, we see all that stuff here. And again, we can actually copy this, but you see that here now our parameter is a video game. So how would we do that now? We again write group map. This time it is the post request. The URL is just the slash async. Again, we inject the video game db context. Context parameter is video game new game. All right, we use our arrow operator like that and we paste this stuff in here. Actually, the parenthesis was too much. That's all right. Maybe get rid of that line here. And now we get some arrows. Why is that? Well, first of all, you already learned that bad request would not work. We have to add results here. We fix the context. All right. And then here again, we use results created, not at action. Now it's just created and here. Now we just write the URL directly. So this would be using string interpolation API video games, and then the new ID, new ID of the video game. And in here, just the object like that. Maybe this also makes more sense as it states here produces a status code 201 created response. And we enter the URI of the new game so we can access it directly and also the new object semicolon here, all the arrows are gone. And hopefully this now works. So let's try that real quick. Restart, there it is or reloads rather we test this. There we are, I already reloaded the the application, we test this new post request, and I have a body paired. So now it's Halo Infinite, we hit send. And there it is, we get Halo Infinite with ID for back, isn't that nice. And now we can also try to get all our games. And here's the fourth one. Great. So this is our post request. Now let's continue with put. And actually you already know everything, I guess. But let's just continue with the put method to make it complete. But the the pattern is always the same, right? We now have the map put method, we add our address here, ID int, and then it's async, again, with the video game DB context, call this context, and the parameters now are ID and video game updated game arrow operator here. And now we can actually copy this from our video game controller. Let me grab that. And in here now we fix the context there and there. And again, we have our results object or the results class rather and return a no content, All right? Let's test that reloading the application. Now first, let's get one specific game to test the request. And here I want to get cyberpunk It sent. There it is. So let's grab this and now put test the request ID three. And regarding the body, this is now called Phantom Liberty, for instance, hit send, no content comes back. But when I now get all the games, we see this is our change. This works great. And the last one is delete. All right, same pattern again, we have group map delete this time, our route is just the ID, right? And then again, async video game DB context, context, then the ID. And I just recognized that I called this thing arrow operator, but this is actually not 100% correct. This is the lambda operator or the lambda arrow. So sorry about that. It's the lambda operator because we're using a lambda expression here. And then in curly braces, we just copy again the stuff from our old controller like that and put 
put this here. Again, we fix the context that's here and then results this thing and this thing and we should be done. Format everything and restart the application. There we are. Let's now try to delete Halo again. ID 4, hit send. No content comes back, but when we try to get all our games, hit send, we only got the first three. And now the next step would be authentication. What about authentication? Well, it's actually pretty simple. For instance, when we want to secure our get method, we can just add require authorization. All right, let's test that real quick. We hit restart application, reload, test request, we hit send, and then we get this error here. No authentication scheme was specified, it says. And that's absolutely correct. We haven't specified an authentication scheme yet, but that's something for this video right here. Oh yeah, and about that ebook and the source code, just check out the video description below. Take care.